This is a story which goes back quite a number of years, probably to the 1960s. At night, there will be trains running from ports on the East Coast, carrying fish, packed in ice, to fish markets. Might have been from Aberdeen to Billingsgate. And I'm told that the fish with ice was packed in wooden boxes until a company came up with a kind of cardboard which could cope with having ice in it and the ice melting. It didn't all soften and fall apart. It comes with putting a lot of glue in the mix and some layers of plastic either side. And then a chap, an ingenious inventor, came up with a way of cutting the cardboard so that the boxes could be sent flat and then, when they were needed, put together to make the box. It was lovely. The fish industry liked it. The company that was making the boxes were delighted because they sold a lot of boxes. But the one people who hadn't been consulted on this were the people who made wooden boxes who found themselves all of a sudden without a market. That's disruptive change. But disruption, as I've just pointed out, can have losers as well as winners. This is Stewardship Sunday. It's a Sunday when, in accordance with tradition, the focus has been on Christian giving. Now, giving is biblical for Christians. We have a generous God. Jesus was generous. Jesus taught us to be generous. In the early church, not long after it had started, at Pentecost, people were bringing quite significant sums of money and handing them over to the apostles who I think used them for relieving people who were desperately in need. But I want to be careful about what I say this morning. We are living in a time of disruption and as I've already pointed out, disruption causes misery as well as occasionally being a good thing. I don't know the situation of everyone who will be listening to this, but I can imagine that some people will be in a stable position financially, some people will not be in a stable position and may be very worried about what's going to happen, and there may be some, like me, who as grandparents are in a stable position, but their children are not and they are worrying and then you worry for them. So I want to be careful in what I say. I don't want this to be an indiscriminate message telling everyone to give more. The Bible, if anything, encourages people to give so far as they are able to do so. Now, there are three things I thought I'd mention. First of all, there is a biblical verse, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. I think it was in the readings for last week. I'll just read it. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. It's a little bit on the lines of what you put in governs what you get out. Now, that's fine, but thinking about the parable of the widow's mite. It's one of the gospel parables. Jesus saw some rich Jewish elders putting sizable amounts of money into the temple treasury. And then he saw a widow who put in one of the tiniest coins you can get, the widow's mite. And what did Jesus make of it? Oh, well, they, with great fanfare of 
put in a small percentage. That's what he said about the elders. But this woman, she's blown it. She's just put in 100% of available resources. She was the one who had sown generously. Now the third thing I was going to mention, again it's a story. It goes back some years. I was a helper on a week away holiday for children from inner city. It was run by Church Pastoral Aid Society. One evening, children had gone to bed and all the helpers met together to pray. And in the course of the prayer meeting, somebody prayed in tongues and somebody else had an interpretation. And it was quite a longish interpretation. In it, God said some rather nice things to us. But there was one bit which has stuck with me. And when I came to pray about this talk I'm giving now, it popped into my head. And it was this. Those words, you are not fully open to me, were not said in the context of giving. They were more concerned with our relationship to God generally. But they can apply to anything in how we relate to our Father, including the issues of stewardship of money and use of time. The more I think about it, those words fully open seem very challenging. Challenging because human things contrive to shout louder than our Lord chooses to speak. It seems easy to think that human needs are urgent because there are times by which they must be done, whereas Father God is always there, always there tomorrow. Somehow we can drift into treating urgency or human necessity as being the same thing as importance. But what is most important isn't always what shouts loudest or seems most urgent. And at the present time when everything is being disrupted, it seems to me that staying close to Father God and seeking his face is even more important than ever and even more immediately necessary than ever.